Reading 80 from the Psychological Commentaries on the Teaching of Gurdjieff and Yerspinsky by Dr. Maurice Nichol. Volume 3. Great Amwell House, May 31st, 1947. On Violence and Understanding. I will contrast violence with understanding. Violence is the antithesis of to understanding. All violence has its roots in not understanding another. It is said in the work that understanding is the most powerful force we can create, and also that we have to create our lives. So we have to create understanding. Suppose you feel violent towards another person, and then let us imagine that you get to know and understand that person you will no longer be violent. Now, it is also said in the work that all violence has its roots in negative emotion. I said above that all violence has its root in not understanding. There is no contradiction in this. It means simply that negative emotions do not lead to understanding, but to violence. The more negative you are, the less you understand, and the more violent you tend to be. And since the work says that understanding is the most powerful force we can create, it is clear that continual indulgence in and enjoyment of negative emotions can only create negative things. Understanding is a positive thing, so negative emotion cannot create understanding, but only misunderstanding. Misunderstanding is not a positive thing. Some people even love to misunderstand. But this is simply to love negative emotions, for negative emotions never speak the truth. They are liars, often very clever liars, but always liars. If you are in a negative state, then everything is distorted and you understand nothing or misunderstand everything. Truth can be twisted into a thousand semi-truths. As for example, someone says something to you, but because you hate the person, you twist it, leave out a bit, alter the sequence, and then you have a lie and not truth. Yet something in you, if you listen, tells you that you are lying. What tells you is buried conscience, which is the herald of of higher centers as John the Baptist of Christ. Unless we had something in us that can, as it were, chemically taste negative emotions, our case would indeed be hopeless. But after a time, through self-observation, you can tell, or rather you are told internally when you are negative, because a deep unhappiness goes with it. Otherwise, we would have to learn everything inner by copybook and blackboard. Fortunately, being born self-developing organisms as the greatest experiment so far, we have inner senses and materials in us for this development. That is, we can create understanding, the most powerful thing, Now the work says a man is his understanding. He is not his size, his money, position, birth, strength, or his prestige, or distinctions, or religion. A man is his understanding. So a man, a woman who understands little or nothing, is, from the standpoint of the work, of no value. It is worthwhile reflecting on this, especially today, when there is a danger of a general loss of understanding over all the earth. Now before mentioning again the work definition of understanding, I will say by way of commentary that to understand one must learn, and learning is to perceive in oneself the truth of a thing that one is taught, that the thing is so. This leads to understanding. The work teaches that knowing and understanding are quite different. 
I may know many things, but may never have perceived in myself the truth of any of them. In that case, I do not understand what I know, though I may retain it in memory. The work says that understanding is the arithmetical mean between one's level of knowledge and one's level of being. If one's knowledge is represented by the number 20, and one's being by the number 10, then if we add 20 and 10, it equals 30. Divide by 2, and the result is 15. 15 is the arithmetical mean between 20 and 10. This would mean that I understand only a part of what I know. Now you have reflected for yourselves on why being is necessary for understanding and why knowledge alone does not give understanding. When a man perceives in himself the truth of something he has come to know, let us say that mankind is asleep. He then receives this truth in himself and acknowledges it, but only when he sees the truth of it himself. It then combines with his being. It is being that receives knowledge and transforms it into understanding. Otherwise, knowledge remains chiefly in the memory and does not affect the man himself as a man. The quality of the reception of knowledge therefore depends on the level of being. Low being can receive little or nothing, and knowledge given to low being can only be used in a wrong way and not rightly understood. This is the problem of knowledge and being. We have to be constantly reminded of it. It is, in fact, one of the greatest problems that conscious man is faced with in trying to lift mankind to a higher level of development. Knowledge alone cannot do this. Now we will return to work on being as taught in this system. We have to work on knowledge of our being, self-remembering, non-identifying, non-considering. By self-observation, according to the discipline of the work, we come to knowledge of our being, namely that we do not remember ourselves. By the same means, we come to the knowledge that we identify, and of what we identify with, especially. Finally, we begin to know what our chief forms of internal considering are. All this is knowledge of our being. There are also other things that we have to observe and get to know, but we are only speaking now of those mentioned above. To become conscious of these things saves time. I refer to the self-evolution that is required of everyone. A person not conscious of his being cannot change. There is a way called the way of good householder, but this is very long. One should work while it is day. Things have to be brought in the light to change. Light is consciousness. Now I will add to the list knowledge of one's negative emotions. In O's teaching of this system, he particularly dwelt on this part of it and the importance of first observing and then separating from one's negative states. In this connection, he spoke of violence and how violence destroyed everything in us like an outbreak of fire. And how one moment of violence could put a person back to the beginning. He indicated early that the fourth way was not ladylike and could produce violence in people, but always said that one has to understand why things are said and done as they are. To react with violence is the easiest of all things. To understand is the most difficult. I said last time that external considering is essential for understanding anyone. It has two sides, putting yourself in the position of the other person and putting the other person in your position. Now it might be said that when you get violent, you come to the limit or end of your being. 
capacity for endurance is a sign of being. Small being, which only loves itself, soon reaches its limit and becomes violent. In violence, one is totally asleep and has no understanding. The overcoming of violence is one of the things spoken of in the work. The more you see others in yourself and yourself in others, the more understanding and the less violence you have. And the more you realize as a fact your own nothingness, the less violence. In the Gospels, this is called consciousness of neighbor and consciousness of God.